code it, but it's, it's the sequence of operations that's doing is the same. So the OS remove and the OS RMDIR work on single files and single empty directories. And then the shell util RM tree will just go and do it for everything all in one go. And is therefore that bit quicker and easier to use. Um, but anyway, uh, RMDIR will go and work uh, to remove your file for you. Okay, so the final part of this uh, unit on the uh, uh, operating system support for working with files and directories is to look specifically at the problem of creating temporary files and directories. So quite often, if you're writing a big bit of code, you may find that at some point you want to create a, a file or maybe a directory full of files that are only gonna be needed for a short period of time whilst you run the code. Um, there may be many reasons why you want to go and do this. If you're processing a lot and lot of data, then you might run out of memory. If you try and bring it all, read all the files all, all at the same time, you might want to read a, a batch of your data, process it, save those intermediate results, process another batch, save those intermediate results and so on, in which case you want to create some temporary files to store those intermediate results in. Or alternatively, your analysis might be to go and um, prepare some data in, to make, in order to make then go and run some of the program uh, on that data and then collect the results from that program um, and plot them in a nice way. In which case you're going to want to be storing the data in, in temporary files whilst you go and call whatever other program you're going to be using with them. So for all of these things you want to go and create some temporary files and directories. The problem is that uh, creating temporary files and directories is a bit of a security nightmare. And if you're working in an environment where you have to care about these things, um, then uh, it gets quite complicated. And even if you're not in an environment where the security is a problem, um, simply things like making sure that you don't call the file by a name that already exists and accidentally overwrite data that you didn't mean to. Or if you have two copies of your program running at the same time, if they both work with the same files and directories and they could interfere with each other. So you want to have some way of saying, I know that I've created a, a file name or a directory that no other bit of code ought to be able to go and work with and no other bit of code is going to expect to be working with. And therefore it's a, it's a sort of private bit of file space for me to work in. Um, generally speaking, trying to go and do this yourself is, is going to be tricky, but fortunately Python gives you a whole module that's dedicated for uh, helping you with temporary files and directories. And this is the temp file module. Okay, so in the first instance, if you want to just create a, a single temporary file, um, then temp file gives you a couple of ways of going about doing that. Um, it kind of has a fairly basic low level way of doing it, which is the um, MKS temp function, which stands for make secure temporary file. Um, and if you go and call that, it will go and duly create a, a temporary file and it will perform a very low level um, open of that file. Um, and then what it gives back out of that function then is a number which represents um, what the operating system understands is uh, the, how to access that file that's just created for you and the name of the file that's just created. Um, so um, you can tell it, for example, with uh, adding a keyword parameter suffix that you want to give it a particular file name extension. Um, and with a prefix, you can tell it you want to give it a, uh, to start the name of your temporary file with a particular string. So you might, for example, want to make sure the extension is correct so that um, the operating system is going to recognize it as the right sort of file. So if you're, say, passing the temporary file into another program and that other program only wants .txt files, then you have to give it a file name that's .txt. Um, and you might want to give it a prefix to help you recognize um, that it's your temporary file, not anybody else's temporary file um, that's being created. <laughs> okay, so um, you can go and do that. So as I say, the problem with MKS temp is that it's a bit tricky to go and use because it gives you this back this number that represents this file it's opened. Um, and so you have to be able to go and get that into a file variable, or use it as a file variable in order to do anything useful with it. Um, so there is a function to do this, it's called os. 
FD open, which stands for file descriptor open, because that number is, is what's called a file descriptor. Um, and you can use it like, like this. Um, so uh, I'm just doing with os.fd open. Um, and then uh, I've got the temporary file I created. I've got that, that temporary file I created variable for the zero means the first element, which is just the, the number eight in this case. And I'm opening it for writing um, and then um, giving the file variable in the usual way. And I can just use it like any other file that we've created. Um, but it's a bit tricky and it's a bit of a faff and you don't really want to be messing with low level file descriptors. It's really not kind of much point. So fortunately, uh, temp file gives you a much better way of doing it, which is with a named temporary file uh, function. But it's strictly, it's a, a, a not a function, but it's, it behaves like a function. Um, and so you can do the same thing like this. So I do uh, with temp file dot named temporary file. Um, and then um, I'm telling you, I want to, in this case, W plus is the mode. So that's read and write from that file as a text file. I've given it a suffix, I've given it a prefix. Um, and I come out of the end and then it's um, as some variable. And that uh, variable I've got there is a file variable that I can treat just as if I'd done a with open, whatever else. Um, it behaves exactly the same. Uh, but it has one extra thing, and that is it has a dot name attribute, which is the actual name of the file on the hard disk that I have um, accessed. So in this particular little snippet here, I've written hello world to that temporary file, um, and then I've printed out the, the name of the file. And you can see that the um, temporary name is given me, so it saved it into uh, a fairly messy looking path, but that's actually Windows idea of where temporary files live. And then um, it's got my suffix, my temp data, and then a random string to make sure it's a unique file name, and then .txt. Um, and the other thing about um, that named temporary file is that when I come out of the width, not only is the file closed, but by default the file is also deleted. So that is fine if what I want to do is make sure that I'm cleaning up after myself. So if I'm in the scenario where I'm processing a lot of data and I need to store some intermediate results, um, then I could use that kind of uh, simple structure there. It would create a temporary file. I can write my intermediate results there. Because I've opened it as W+, I can also read from that file. So a bit later on, I can read back from all those that, that file. Uh, and then when I come out of the width, the file gets closed, but it also gets thrown away because presumably I don't need my intermediary results any longer. If, on the other hand, what I want to do is keep that file around uh, in order to pass somewhere else, then I tell it not to go and delete. And I can undo that by simply adding delete equals false. Um, so in that case, with this bit of code, I'm doing exactly the same thing, but um, I'm making sure the file doesn't get deleted. Um, I'm also going to just note down the name of that file um, in a variable name in a variable. So my name. Do the same thing. I print hello world to it, and then what I'm going to go and do um, is just show you that the that file still exists. So os.path exists that that file, uh, and it does. And since it exists, that means I can just open it in a regular sort of way and just read it back. Um, uh, and check that the contents are right. And then just to finish off, because I've now told the temporary file not to delete itself, I have to make, take care of deleting it um, manually. So I have to do an os.remove to get rid of it. But with that, I've managed to go and um, uh, create temporary files and um, uh, those files um, uh, uh, will, will either be, you can either keep them around to go and pass onto a different program or you can go and delete them, and there's no kind of annoying messing around with FD open or anything else. Um, if you actually want to go and um, have a completely private temporary file, in fact, a uh, temp file has a, a, a thing called just called dot temporary file, uh, which is not even a named temporary file. So it doesn't have a suffix and it doesn't have a prefix. Um, the file has no name, you just have the file variable 
um, and you can read and write to that file variable. Um, but obviously in that case, you can't keep it around afterwards because um, it's an entirely private file. And as soon as you're done with it, it disappears completely. But if you need to um, uh, just store temporarily inside your program some information in a file, and you definitely don't, don't want anybody else ever to be able to see that information, then, then that works really well. Okay, so that is the creating a temporary file, but of course there's an equivalent problem, which is you might want to create a, a temporary directory. So in other words, your, um, your whatever code you're working with is going to generate lots and lots and lots and lots of temporary files. Um, and the simplest thing to go and do is just keep them all together in one temporary directory. Um, so again, there's an equivalent to uh, MKS temp, which is called MKD temp for make directory temporary, um, which will give you uh, a temporary directory. Um, uh, and just like MKS temp, it's kind of the, the basic one that directory exists, but then um, once it's created, it will go on existing uh, forevermore. Um, so um, uh, you're going to have to go and take care of cleaning up that directory after you're finished with it, otherwise you're going to end up leaving um, gradually increasing numbers of temporary directories all over the hard disk of your computer, which probably you don't want to go and do because you'll just fill up your hard disk. Um, uh, and so after you're finished with it, you either have to do an os.rm or maybe a shell utils rm tray to clean up your directory. Um, however, there's also a temp file dot temporary directory which is analogous to the uh, named temporary file that we saw um, just previously. Uh, and the name, uh, a temporary directory, uh, ensures that it uh, cleans up itself afterwards. Um, so it's used in a very similar way. Um, so uh, in this case, with tempfile.temporary directory, as, and then the, the variable that's going to return back to you is not a file, it's just a string that contains the name of the temporary directory. Um, and so here you can see I printed it out. Um, I've proven that the temporary directory exists um, and that it is a directory. And then when we come out of the with statement, it basically does an RM tree for us and it completely clears up that entire directory. And so you can see if I check, I've jumped out of the with statement that that temporary directory doesn't exist any longer and um, it's entirely gone away. <laughs> 